I think I finally found my server patching solution. Hey everybody, this is uh, Tom with Tom's Tech Show, and I, I've constantly searched for you know methods and applications to be able to keep you know computers updated, servers updated. And, and there are a few different programs out there. I mean, Windows has their Windows Sus date server, which in my experience it really never has never worked uh, very well. It I ran it on a system with 16 cores and 64 gigs of memory and 10 terabytes of hard disk space. And it would bog down and fail and crash you know, update one of, you know, 20 servers and really not be reliable. So I keep looking for what, you know, I wrote scripts in order to do Windows updates and push out, you know, Windows updates, PowerShell scripts that kind of manages that in in our VMware test environment that we have, my day job. And that seems to work. Like if the VM's off, it'll turn it on, update it, shut it down, do things like that. Um, but now I found for other systems, you know, I found this other software, which I they're not paying me. That this is not a uh, paid, you know, promotion or anything. I just found this and I'm using it, and I really am liking how it works. So it's Manage Engine Vulnerability Manager Plus. So. Um, covers you know, vulnerabilities, server configurations, all your different patches that you need. Um, covers Windows, Linux, and Mac, so that's kind of nice. Um, and there's a free trial, or free 25 computer version. So if you have, you're a small office, then you can easily be able to deploy this on a computer in the back you know, that, that goes out and just grabs and checks all the computers the office to make sure that they're they're updated and then applies it. you can even have it apply the updates and boot like during the middle of the night when nobody's in the office makes it really smooth and clean to be able to do all right here's the interface when you come log into the main home screen um there's a lot so this is your total vulnerabilities that are out there that you need to patch um how many are fixable uh, there's some vulnerabilities that have some kind of manual resolution that we need to go do something. Uh, but here it's going to tell me all the different types of vulnerabilities. Here are all the zero day vulnerabilities that I need to go take care of. And then there's this little matrix. So I've got, you know, the severity of things that need to be patched. Out here there's 54 that in 90 days are seven that in the past 90 days are critical. 54 that are almost critical that we get down to 17 are moderate so it's just showing you want to have like you really want to have like all these you know, the stuff in the red you want those numbers zero right that's where you really want to be so i've of course have added servers and not scanned and patched them here so that we can look at this and actually see you know some numbers and here it will tell you what vulnerabilities over time that there are i mean this is you know Getting you know crazy as I add servers, the number of vulnerabilities it just you know, goes through the through the roof. But um, it gives you knowing that you need to do things. Here I added some patches here, so it went up when I added some servers. Then down here it dropped because I added and patched a bunch of servers and added some more servers and now uh, back up again. So you really want this graph to be going down over time, and it'll show you the the different vulnerabilities that are out here that you need to patch. The one nice thing uh, that it does do when I come here to patches, oh no, it's threats, I think. Threats, so this will show me the, uh, the CVSS score, so about how, how bad, you know, this patch is, like some 3.2s, 4s, 5s, 6s, we want to probably want to go down to so the there's some down here that are 9.8s. So I probably want to do those right, like right away. Uh, some of these are SQL injection vulnerabilities. 
things like that. So it's a really nice way of seeing all of the vulnerabilities in your environment in one place. So, and this will also show, I mean, it'll show things for Chrome. It'll show things, Notepad++, all your other, you know, software. That... Now we have our patches. So like I said here, it's, it's got your Windows Defender patches, VMware tools, Team Viewer, Google Chrome, Notepad++, uh, VNC Viewer, and you know, all this software that you probably, MSQL, Workbench, PowerShell, FileZilla, I mean, all these, you know, software that you may not even have known was out network, right? So if I go to Systems now, the next tab, and look at this toolbox, I can actually see what software is installed. So this gives me a really good way to inventory all the software on my network. And if I go here and say, hey, I don't really want the advanced IP scanner, so we can go and, and go to that server and do the action of maybe uninstalling that if I don't want that on that server. But it'll show me the vulnerabilities. Like, so there's a, some Microsoft SQL Server remote code vulnerabilities. This has a 9.8 score. So I definitely am going to want to patch that server, those things. So what I can do is just come down here, select the server, click install missing patches, select them all, tell it to install, give it a deploy at the earliest time, and I'm just gonna come down here and say deploy immediately. Deploy immediately. So deploy immediately, and then we're going to see. So it's yet to be applied. So we can refresh this, and then eventually it will copy all the patches down, get them all staged, then install all the patches. Report back to me that you know maybe the it needs to be rebooted. Then I can go to the back to the system and have it restarted and things remotely from one little one console so that's kind of the nice the nice thing it'll gives you this other security config so it shows me some of the other things that i can do to a server to help keep it from being you know attacked like so uh, one first one here <clears throat> some of these here are tls 1.1 is enabled and we probably disable that uh, administrative shares are enabled this is actually you know, you might want to disable those. There are some shares uh, for file sharing on the system. Uh, administrator accounts are enumerated during elevation, so it goes and looks. That's something we can disable. Uh, BitLocker is not enabled, so that's something we can probably go do and be able to get this score, basically the, this number of things on here, uh, updated so that we know that our if you want to audit these servers and go and look and see what what's the vulnerability you know framework you know how vulnerable is that what's the surface area of this server uh, we can look at that we also do a port audit which also helps us to see okay, we got NetBIOS stuff open we got snmp open uh beam nfs server so we know some of these things that we want some of these things that we don't want but this Will help us to see if there's something that's left you know that we missed or that it's a new server that's going in place and maybe somebody another technician or somebody set it up and didn't catch some of the things that you know, we really want closed um server so really good way to see what ports are open there's 86 you know maybe i can get that down host host process for windows services those you know, what services those are we'd have to look Beam, I know, is on there, so <clears throat> there's going to be quite a few ports on that for that. And we obviously don't need the SQL browser, so Beam runs locally, so I don't need that open. So that we So some things like that. I mean, <clears throat> I know SNMP is locked to uh, just the WhatsApp Gold server for managing and monitoring, so that's so that's okay. And then we can tell it 
right? This one's okay, right? We can go in and ask it, you know, to say, you know, exclude some things because we know that they're. But very nice makes it very easy to manage all these servers and gives you this nice little threat window, you know, right at you so you can tell, you know, especially if you're reporting this to management, you know, kind of a thing. Well, what's our threat, you know, what's our threat level? You know, what's our threat, you know, our surface area that we're be, we can be attacked on it. You can give them a clear, you know, hey, when, you know, like a good screenshot of this and just say, here you go. This is, this is what we're doing right now. These are the things that we have to patch and reboot. And, and makes it very, very clear. And like I said, there's a 25 uh, device free level. So if you have, you know, if you're very, very small office kind of thing, this is really will it really help you be able to do that. You need a computer or a virtual machine uh, somewhere to run it, but uh, working very, very well for for me right now. All right. So like I said, I'm not sponsored or anything by this company, uh, but it is very important to keep your servers patched, keep your applications patched. I mean, we don't, you know, you don't want someone jumping on a server, opening Chrome when there's a known vulnerability, you know, in Chrome, right? How do we update that Chrome instance on say, you know, a hundred computers in a reasonable amount of time? You have like most companies, right? You're running very small staff to keep budgets down. So we need tools in order to facilitate getting installation of software out there. So this was very, very handy tool to set up. It was very easy to set up. There is some things that you have to walk through first to get it going, but um, very, very good. All right. We got any comments. Have you tried this? Is there another application that you use for uh, distributing patches and software updates? Let me know. And uh, thanks for watching. Take care.